folks, this is Ardwolf. Welcome. We are going to start a new playthrough series which will be introduced in this video of this game, Panzer Grenadier from Avalanche Press. Um, there are a number of interesting things about this game. This In this video, I'm going to try and keep it brief. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about Panzer Grenadier, which as you can see, I've already set, uh, set the scenario up um, that I'll be playing, and I'll talk about that as well. Um, there are some interesting, thing, interesting things to be said about Panzer Grenadier. It is an interesting game. Um, I was kind of introduced to it uh, years ago when it came out um, as sort of a, a, a much, much lighter alternative to Advanced Squad Leader. Um, the two games are maybe not as directly comparable as that might make it sound. Um, Panzer Grenadier is a platoon level game um, that kind of covers platoon level actions in general in World War II. Um, and like ASL, you can it, there are sets for um, you know the East Front, the West Front, the desert, the uh, the jungles in the in the Pacific, so on and so forth. So pretty much all the theaters are covered. Um, however, unlike Advanced Squad Leader, um, each Panzer Grenadier boxed set is a complete game in and of itself. So although all five or six products that I have for Panzer Grenadier are out of print and have been out of print for some time, um, there are some boxed games for Pan the Panzer Grenadier series that are still in print and they are completely playable just by themselves. You buy the box, boom, you set it up and play. Um, so the format of this series is going to be a, a little bit different. Um, in the last playthrough series of When Eagles Fight, please check that out if you're interested in that, um, I kind of just sat down and played the game, made a lot of mistakes, and uh, played it until it was over. Um, I am not going to do that with this uh, scenario of Panzer Grenadier. So, so here is my my evil secret purpose for this game. The, the when I played this back in the day, I said, "Oh, this is actually pretty pretty nice light alternative to ASL." If you know people find ASL intimidating, or if I don't have the stomach for you know the, the blood and guts of ASL, uh, this is a nice alternative. So I picked up several products for it. Uh, but then I kind of took 15 years off of Wargaming, and, or whatever it was, and when I played this again last year, a, a very small scenario, also out of the Airborne expansion, though, um, I was very disappointed. I felt it rang really flat um, and was generally uninteresting. Um, so what I'm going to try to do is clear up that misconception um, in this game. Um, so my my real goal here is is not to play through the entire 52 potential turns of this scenario. It is to decide whether I think Panzer Grenadier is worth keeping or not, bearing in mind that I've already sort of committed to ASL, and now that we have the ASL starter kit. Um, so uh, starter kit number one is in print right now. Starter kit number two should be back in print hopefully sometime this year. Um, so that's that's the real question that I'm going to try and answer. So I am going to play this basically, and, and I don't know how many videos this will be. I don't know how many videos, uh, you know, uh, turns per video we'll get. Um, I'm going to play this until I get bored with it, until I decide it's time to move on to the next game, which if you've checked out the video from the other day, you already know what that's going to be. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how this goes. I, I, I really don't know. Um, I suspect that the sort of disregard I had for the last time I played it may have been due to the scenario, it may have been due to the fact that I wasn't prepared to play and you know wasn't up on the rules and so it rang really kind of stiff and, and false to me. Um, that's entirely plausible. Um, this particular scenario is, I, and I picked this one on purpose because it is the highest rated scenario uh, from the Airborne Expansion. It's called Second Try and it's from June 7th, 1944. Um, this is, uh, looks like uh, this 82nd or 101st Airborne. Uh, annoyingly, it doesn't tell me, but I kind of think it's the 101st because uh, it's uh, the the scenario background it talks about Carantan and the uh, I believe the 101st dropped a little closer to Carantan than the 82nd did. Uh, could be wrong about that, so please correct me in the comments if uh, if I am in fact wrong. Um, this is the initial setup, the Germans set up first in sort of a couple of fairly entrenched positions. Um, the American victory condition is to either take the town in this hex or to blow up the bridge in this hex. So we're going to find out how that works too, because the Americans don't have any engineers. Um, there is no armor on the board at first, uh, but armor comes in in reinforcements. Um, turn one, the Americans get two tanks, or two tank platoons, I should say, and then at any variable turn, uh, sometime after turn two, uh, the Germans will get a bunch of reinforcements as well. And actually, the Americans will get uh, all these reinforcements on turn one, which they need to because we got a big dug-in German position here. So 
which really kind of uh, is going to make it difficult. So the, this American group is going to have to advance through here. Um, the turn counts of these scenarios tend to be a little scary. Um, I don't really know how that's going to work out. I, I think I would call this a relatively large scenario for a one map scenario. There's a, quite a few pieces. Um, there's some tanks, there's some guns, there's some indirect fire weapons. Another reason I picked this scenario is because it's got a mix of forces, unlike the last one that I played that just like had a, some basic infantry and like a machine gun. Um, this is a little more interesting. Um, some of these uh, some of these platoons are a little bit beat up already, so uh, there are like some beat up Panzer Grenadiers in with the German forces and some reduced uh, paratroopers with the American forces. Um, uh, it's a good question as to, and this, by the way, is a big swamp with a river running through it, so I don't even know how that's going to work. Um, but uh, in terms of you know how the Americans are going to tactically approach this, so I think uh, as the Americans, we're going to try and push down the road here, uh, getting rid of these ger entrenched German positions. Um, this American force is going to try and soften this Amer this uh, German force up here, um, and this force in the south is going to try to eliminate uh, this German strong point down here in the bottom. It's not really a strong point because they're not dug in. In several of these uh, positions I had the ability, I think up here, to dig in the Americans too. And since the Americans set up second, I actually might choose to do that before I start to play. Um, uh, yeah, only these guys can start dug in. So we'll, we'll take a look at that before we, before we actually start playing. Um, incidentally, I might as well talk about uh, how I have this organized. So this is one of those games where you can't fit everything in the box. Um, so I have my 4th edition rules printed out from the Avalanche Press website and in a binder. Eventually, maybe I'll put a fancy cover on this. And then I have all the pieces in these uh, container store trays. See my other videos for details on these. Um, the only one I will need handy when we play is this one with the markers in it. Um, I have all of my Americans in one tray. If I bought a bunch more modules, that might change. And then I have all of my Germans in two trays. And I want to say I have two trays of Russians, too, because i got a couple of these front modules. Uh, and then I've got a tray of British and a tray of uh, Italians from the uh, um, desert stuff. Uh, these guys, if you can... The German tray of leaders and assorted things here. Um, these are like more Wehrmacht um, leaders and vehicles. Um, these camo guys are Africa Corps and the light blue guys are Fallschirmjäger. So, or um, Luftwaffe troops, I guess. Uh, although in, in fact, I think, with the possible exception of the artillery, all these will actually be Fallschirmjäger. So, uh, that's how I have it organized. Um, it's not like, I don't have like a, anything like a complete collection of this. There's, there's really a lot of material for this game. Um, I've kind of had my eye on picking some more of it up, but I kind of want to get to play it before I dump any more money on it, because there's some other stuff floating around out there that I have a, a higher uh, potential to get playing, um, rather than um, sitting on my shelf collecting dust, which this has done for a number of years. Not that this is the only game like that, but this is, this is one of those games where it's like I've kind of... Do I need this and ASL? And and I have committed to ASL both sort of mentally and uh, in terms of um, you know what I've spent on it. Um, so do I need both games? And if I had to choose between the two, I would choose ASL. But do I think that Panzer Grenadier is worth enough on its own um, for me to hang on to it as well, or would I tra rather trade it away for something I want a little bit more? Um, I, I am prepared to say at this time that I do not believe it to be a bad game, but uh, the question is, is it interesting and worthwhile for me? So that is what we are going to find out in the course of this series. So once again, stay tuned, and thanks for watching.